In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of specified release rules in HEC ResSim. You can see I have a very simple model here, and we're going to go take a look at the one reservoir that we have in this model. And right now I have two rules. We're, we're in the conservation zone. I have two rules in the conservation zone. Uh, one of them is, and right now I have it as a minimum of 75 CFS, and that applies for the whole year. And I have a minimum of 100 CFS applied for the whole year. So we can go ahead and run this. And then we'll take a look at the results. So here we can see we're starting in the conservation zone. And ResSim wants to hold on to everything that it can when it's in the conservation zone to try to rise to the uh, top of conservation level, which in this case is 75. Now remember that the vertical dash line is that look back period. So it looks like I must have set a look back release of 50. But when the rules actually kick in at this point, you can see that we have 100 <clears throat> as our release from this reservoir, from this dam. If we go and look back at the rule set, you can see that I had a minimum of 75 and then a minimum of 100. But in this case, it really doesn't matter which order those are in because ResSim is going to take the highest minimum. And the reason why it does that is because it says if I have a minimum of 75 and a minimum of 100, if I send out 100, then it means that I'm satisfying both of those rules and they're not really competing against one another. So in this case, the order of those rules doesn't matter. But we're going to go test that with specified release rules. So what we're going to do is change this one to specify. We're also going to change this one to specify. So now we have a specified of 75 and then a specified of 100. And then we'll go ahead and rerun it and take a look at the results. And here you can see once the simulation begins that we do get a different result than we had when we just use minimum release rules. In this case, we get just 75 CFS. And that is the difference between using specified and, and minimum. So you have to be careful with uh, which rules you use. Um, you may not want to over specify them because they tend to be very heavy handed. So in this case, since the specified release rule was uh, the specified release rule of 75 CFS was the highest priority, then it satisfies that one, but it doesn't satisfy the 100. Now, if we change the priority of these and then rerun it and we plot, now we can see that we get just the opposite because since we moved that specified release of 100 above the 75, that one becomes the highest priority. And that's why we now see that once the simulation begins, we're out of the look back period and the simulation begins, that's why we get 100 CFS. Uh, so hopefully this helped to uh, give you a little bit more knowledge about the difference between the minimum and specified release rules. And if you found this helpful, please subscribe to the channel so that way you'll know when these videos come out. And thanks for watching this one.